Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a mica shift. Now, if you have used if you use the color recipe I displayed earlier in the intro, you're gonna have mixed up your mica clay and conditioned it and you're gonna end up with something looking like this. Now even if you didn't use the recipe and you've just conf you've just finished conditioning your mica clay, you're you're still going to end up with something like this. Now the reason for this be is because mica clays or metallic clays contain mica powders and these mica powders are tiny little discs which have a flat side and a edge. Now the flat side and the edge have two completely different colors. The flat side will have a light gold color like this well, they'll have a light color. In my case, I'm using gold primo, and that's why I've got light gold. But if you were using white, for instance, it would have a light white appearance, or if it was silver, it would be light silver. Basically, the flat side of the disc is the lighter color. And then the edge of the discs, I'm just going to cut this to show you. I'll just pop that there. So this is displaying the edges of the discs, which is this side of the disc and that is the darker version of the color so you can see that that's darker than this color and that is why when you have um, just finished conditioning your mica clay you'll end up with these streaks all over the place because these discs are all lying in different directions and so you're going to get different color patterns all over the place now in some techniques this will work and it will give you a wonderful effect but it's not going to work for a mica shift with a mica shift you want more something looking more like this where you have one solid color. So I'm going to bring you over to the pasta machine and I'm going to show you how to get a solid gold color out of this. Okay so we're over by the pasta machine and this is a cheap pasta machine that I got from Kmart so it's a 20 to 40 dollar machine and there are better machines out there like the Atlas machine but I prefer using a cheap machine as they work pretty well for me and I haven't really had much trouble with them but they do involve some tricks to getting them to work the way you want so in the links below the video I will include some links to tutorials on how to use a pasta machine like cleaning them or preventing ripples when you're using the thinner settings so if you're interested in that do check the links below as I'll have some links to that but for now I'm just going to be showing you how to get your mica clay to one solid color so I'm just going to be using it on the thinnest setting and you just roll it through and then you'll fold it over and it doesn't matter which way you fold it you just want to be running it through over and over again and what this essentially does is it's taking all of those discs that are lying in 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 different directions and it's flattening them so you can see already that we're getting an effect we're already getting almost a solid color and you'll just want to carry on doing this until you have achieved a solid color so there you can see we're almost done now the edges over here will almost always be the darker version of the color it's almost impossible to get the entire sheet to be one solid color but you want basically almost the entire sheet to be one solid color. So you'll just carry on running it through the pasta machine. And we are almost done. It doesn't take that long. And you can use any brand for a mica shift. If you're interested in learning more about mica clays, like what the discs do and what the different brands look like and which ones are best for mica shifts, do have a look at my article Mica Clay Unwrapped. It is on my website jessimatutorials.com and if you're on my website I have it in the links below and if you're on YouTube I'll also have a link to that in the links below. So do check that out as I'm sure you'll find that helpful. But for now we have got a solid colour so I'll just bring you back over to the tile. Okay so we're back at the tile and this is the sheet that we're going to be working with and it doesn't really matter which color you have this is basically what it's going to look like just that the color is going to be different of course and um, you you will usually end up with some edges with some crinkles all you want to do is you just want to trim these off so that now you have a nice solid colored sheet 
Then you're going to want to go ahead and choose a stamp. Now, I've got, a, I've got Melanie Muir's stamp from her River collection, but she's got many different stamps on Etsy, which you can go and have a look at. And her stamps are really good for mica shift. Now, it's not just Melanie Muir stamps that are great for mica shift. Lisa Pavelka's ones and Helen Braille's and Christy Friesen's and Sculpey's ones as well. There are many different stamps out there that are great for polymer clay and so I recommend going and checking out um, texture stamps for polymer clay as there are just many many different varieties and I'm sure you'll go mad playing around with them. So we've got that one and what I like about the Melanie Muir ones is because of the material that they're made of they allow you to if the back is dry it will allow you to stick it to your tile. Now I'm working on a ceramic tile and so I can stick this down and it also works on a glass surface as well as I have tried that as well and now I'm going to try and move it and so I'm shaking the camera but I can't move it so you could just easily lift it up again but it's stuck on there which is great for when you're stamping. Then you're going to get a spray bottle and I've got water in here and you're going to want to spray the entire stamp and what this does is it prevents your clay from sticking in the stamp and so it will give you, it will give you a nice imprint. Now we have got two sides of the mica clay over here we've got the one side which has a few ridges and then we've got the other side which is one pure colour. You want the best side to be facing down into the stamp and you'll just lay it down but don't press into it yet you want to first spray the top and what I found this does is it prevents your fingers from from picking the clay up. When I first started um, pressing clay into stamps for Makume Gan and Marker Shift what have you, I, find, I found that the clay kept on sticking to my fingers and I kept lifting it off the stamp and it drove me absolutely mad. But I fixed that problem by just spraying the top of the clay with water. Now another thing that a lot of the professionals will show is that they will roll, the, they'll start from one end and just make a quick pass with the roller pressing down really hard and what this does is it will give you a really great impression but it's a real hit and miss technique that is very hard for beginners and even people like me that have tried for quite a while to get. I get it sometimes but it's a bit risky so what I like to do is I like to press my clay into the stamp using my fingers first and then use the roll. So I've already done quite a bit and you can see that I'm starting from one end and working to the other end and what this does is it pushes air and excess water up and out of the stamp so that it doesn't distort the pattern that you're trying to imprint into your clay. So you'll just go ahead and do this and the reason I like doing it so that the stamp is first on my tile and then the clay is on top of the stamp instead of the opposite way around is because it means that I can feel when my clay is properly squished into the stamp. So if I just lift away my fingers right now you can see over here that we've even got a slight imprint of the stamp over here. We've got the little twirls. So I personally prefer doing it this way. You could try doing the opposite way and you could also try and just use the uh, roller to make a quick pass. But I personally recommend using this technique, especially if you're a beginner, as it's just easier and it's risk free. It takes a bit longer, but it's much easier to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just taking my roller and I'm not applying much pressure at all. My goal here is to just flatten out the back. I can apply pressure but you want to just make sure as you're passing over this that your your stamp doesn't your clay doesn't lift out of the stamp. So there you can see that it's lifted up over here. When you see that you want to lift your clay up because otherwise if you carry on rolling you'll get a ghost image and basically what that is is that your your clay will lift up and then rest down in a different section of the stamp and so you'll have to re-stamp that texture and so you can get cross lines and all sorts of things so just be careful of that so when you'll take it out of the stamp you want to be quite careful you don't want to be going and ripping it off like that 
you want to just slowly peel it up and most of the time if you've done a good job spraying your stamp it will come out very easily but occasionally you'll have accidentally missed an area and so if you rip your stamp your clay right off your stamp you'll rip the clay and it will get stuck in the stamp so you just want to peel it off gently and make sure that you don't accidentally rip your clay so we've got quite a good impression and now Melanie Muir stamps have very deep impressions and that's what I like about them and I personally recommend them and Lisa Pavelka stamps and there's a few other stamps that have really deep impressions but I find that stamps that have deep impressions are great for beginners who haven't quite developed you, you haven't had enough practice to have really shallow stamps to um, shave off the raised areas so I personally recommend using the deep indent stamps if you're a beginner until you've had a bit more practice and then using the shallow stamps I still struggle with the shallow stamps from time to time so as you can see my work area has a lot of water all over it and my clay is doused in water and so I need to go and dry this up with a cloth or a tissue or a kitchen towel whichever you have handy and I need to get rid of all the water before I proceed because if you have water still on your work surface or your clay and you start shaving it using your blade you're going to find that the clay is going to slide all over your tile firstly and also any of those indents that you have that you shave off they will stick to your blade and so it will cause many many different problems so you want to get rid of all the water in the vicinity so now that you've gone and dried up your work surface and your clay you're going to need to trim up these edges where your stamp didn't quite cover the clay and all you do is you'll just take your firm tissue blade and go and cut off these edges and the great thing about doing a mica shift is that all of this waste well not really waste but this excess clay that you're not going to use is still one color so you can just ball that up and pop it in the bag that you got your clay from and you can just go ahead and you can use it again in another marker shift or whatever you need so whenever you do a marker shift if you accidentally mess up you can just go back and ball it up and try again and you won't be wasting any clay so it's great for beginners to practice your shaving skills and not waste any clay. So then you need to go and tap your clay onto your tile and this is why there shouldn't have been any water in the area because you want your clay firmly stuck onto your tile and this prevents it from sliding around when you're shaving. So that's properly stuck on. Then I'll go and take my tissue blade and now this is my flexible one as you can see and you can of course use your firm one and this one's also got a bit of flexibility to it but not as much as the other one but I personally prefer this one and I have a few tips to working with it because most people that start will hold their blade like this whether it be the firm or the flexible one and because this one's so flexible it will tend to move a lot when you're shaving and this leaves a lot of room for you to accidentally gouge your clay or go too shallow so whenever you're using these blades you want in when you're shaving with these blades not when you're picking things up but when you're shaving with the blades you want to try and hold them as close to the middle as possible and you also want to keep your hands resting on your work surface as much as possible as this will keep your hands steady while you're shaving so I'll go ahead and curve the blade and hold right in the middle as that gives me a lot of um, control over what I'm doing. And then I'll just go and slide over the mic shift. And what I'm doing is I'm going shallow at first and I can go back and get the areas that I missed but it's always better to go shallow first because you can always go back and fix it. Well, if you went too deep, you can't go back and fix that. You're going to have to start again. And you want to go slow with this. This is where patience comes in handy. <laughs> because if you try to rush this, you're going to make a mistake and mess it up. 
So you can see that already this side is looking completely different from this side. You can see that there's some dark gold areas and light gold areas. And this is because we have manipulated those mica discs to form a pattern. And this is why you can get a flat sheet with a pattern on it out of a single coloured clay. And this of course only works with metallic clays that, co that contain mica clays that contain mica powders and personally after doing a little bit of testing I found that um, the metal colors of any brand do the best mica shifts. I found that you can still do it with the colored clays like um, bright green in the Primo selection but I find that they're not they don't give as good a mica shift as the metal colored ones do. And I explain that more in my article mica clay unwrapped. So we're almost done. I'm just going to do the last little bit. And of course, because I've gone slowly and I've gone shallow first, I've still got some areas that are raised. And before you flatten out your mica shift, you want to try and get as much of these raised areas as possible. You want to make the sheet as flat as possible before you use your roller. And I'll explain a little bit more about why I use a roller instead of a pasta machine in just a minute. Okay, just get those off so you don't want them sticking. So we've almost got all of those raised areas. I'm just checking because you can get some distortion if you've got some raised areas. You don't have to get perfectly flat, you just want to try and get it as close as possible. Okay. So I'm just going to save off over here. Over there, and that should do it. Now I'm going to bring over my roller. And I like using a solid acrylic roller because the hollow ones I sometimes accidentally break. So I recommend using a solid acrylic rod because the hollow ones you have to be careful how much pressure you put on them. But anyway, when you're flattening out anything, I find that it's best to go with your roller first before you take it to the pasta machine. And you'll roll in one direction first and then you go over and roll in the opposite direction. And what this does is it will first off keep your pattern from distorting because if you rolled in one in one direction your pattern would just be flattening out this direction in the direction you're rolling and so your pattern would get stretched but if you're rolling in both directions you're going to be stretching it out in both directions and so therefore widening your pattern now um, the reason I only put I don't put my mic shift through the pasta machine and I just used my roller is because I found over some time that if you put your mica shift through your pasta machine your pasta machine consists of rollers and the rollers squeeze the clay to get it thinner and so you're going to be pushing on those mica discs and you're going to be flattening them and so putting it through the pasta machine will dull your pattern and so I find using the roller to just flatten it out and then just leave it is best instead of trying to thin it out on the pasta machine. So I'm going to go and lift this up and I want to just show you what will happen if I roll it through on the pasta machine. Okay, so I'm on my thickest setting at the moment and I'm going to need to take this down to my number five. So my seventh setting is my thickest setting and I'm going down to my number five. And I'm just going to roll this through. So I haven't quite flattened it yet. Then I'm going to go down to my number four and flatten it in the same direction. And just be careful when you put it down because you don't want it to overlap or anything like that. You want it to be resting nice and flat against the rollers. And then I'm going to roll it through. 
and so already you can see that the pattern is dulled a little bit then I'm going to flip and I'm going to bring it down to my number three or actually my number two and I'm going to roll it through as well. so you don't lose the pattern entirely but it will decrease the depth and it will it will give it a much flatter look than if you than if you used just your roller to flatten it out so it won't look as rich in color so I'll just bring that up for you to see so you can still see that you've got pretty good mica shift but I just prefer using my roller and just flattening it out and then not making it thin because I just find that the mica shift comes out better so I'm going to bring you back over to the tile and I'm going to show you um, this one versus another one I did earlier okay so here's the one that we ran through the pasta machine and it, the reason the mica shift isn't so good is partially because the pattern has been has been expanded and so the detail isn't as sharp but it's also because you've kind of flattened those mica discs mm -hmm. now here's the exact same pattern just that I haven't run this through, my, through the pasta machine I've just rolled it with a roller and now the reason it partially looks better than this one is because of course the pattern is closer together but it's also because I haven't flattened out those mica discs as much now this is just a personal thing that I found out you can you can um, you can still run your mica shifts through the pasta machine I'm not saying that it's wrong I'm just saying that you might experience the pattern degrading a little bit that's just something that I personally found out but that's basically how you do a mica shift now I'm just going to bring over some examples of what you can use a mica shift for here are some beads that I did using a mica shift and they've got resin on them and that's what's causing the shine but um, you can see the you can see that the resin brings out a sparkle in the beads and also there's quite a bit of depth to them and that's because this has been baked and that translucent that we mixed into our mica clay has gone translucent and so has enhanced the depth of our piece and that is a big reason why I say um, mix one pot translucent and one pot mica clay together because it just adds a little bit of depth to that piece so that's just those ones and that was the um, the brown um, spectrum but here are some other ones that I have over here where I've just used Kato per watt and you can see that even with the white you can get a great mica shift and this I also mix with that one pot translucent one pot mica clay rule that I like using and you can see that you just get a really great mica shift from putting the resin on and it can be done with any color that contains mica clay so I do hope that you'll experiment around with the technique and see what you can make I'd love to see what you've made if you are on my website watching this video just the website Jesse Mo Tutorials you can see that there's a, a link down below to some variations on this technique as I am um, I know that you guys like seeing variations and so I've got a few pictures down below to a gallery and if you're on YouTube I have a link to my website jessimatutorials.com be sure to check that out as there are many different articles some pictures lots of pictures and just generally a lot more information than I can give on YouTube so I'm sure that you'll find that helpful so do please check that out and if you did find this video helpful check the links below on my website or on YouTube as there'll be links to more tutorials like this one and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.